failing a bill, we can always add amendments. We can postpone bills, and as today, we can just have a hearing. And um, because of the situation, that's exactly what we're going to do is we're going to hear it so we can at least be up to speed on what the representative has to offer and uh, and uh, let us bow for a word of prayer before we start. Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for giving us the place to be to serve you and serve our constituents. When you ask your blessings on this meeting and all that is said and done, it may bring glory to you in some way. All we ask in your name. Amen. All right. It's all yours, Representative. All right. Thank you, Chairman. Um, during the summer, I had one of our regional commission uh, folks contact me, uh, actually on behalf of another regional commission that was outside of my area. And then as word started spreading, um, I started getting contacted by most of them. It's a real simple, short change, uh, short change. So I'm not going to belabor the point. Basically, on the, under the current uh, opens meetings law, the only way you can tell a conference is to be a statewide board. So when they presented this idea to me, and I went to legal counsel, they thought it was a great idea because of technology and and what uh, Representative Price was just saying. Actually, a lot of people could use this. So he said. Why don't we just say all regions or all commissions? But then as we started talking, he said, uh, you know, it's easier to expand something it is than it is to contract. So he said, why don't we just start out with your original quest and say, okay, only regional commissions. And here's the problem. Some of the, especially in South Georgia, you know, you can, some of these folks are coming from an hour, hour 20 minutes away and for a 45 minute meeting. And so they're spending half their day uh, for a short meeting. And because of that, and if, if they know it's going to be a short meeting, and, and a lot of these people are business people, they're not government employees because half these boards are people who work for the commission, and then they have a lot of business people who they get input and who are members of, of the commission. So the idea was if they could meet through Skype or using your PDA or whatever, you could, um, hey, is he a member? <laughs> he is, but we've already started, so we're going to continue in this in this posture. Thank you. Okay. So that was the request to allow them the ability to teleconference um, as far as regards to open meetings because they would be allowed, uh, any citizen would be allowed that same privilege. And, I mean, really, that's, I mean, glad to open, ask some questions, but it's it's really that simple. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? You're recognized. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Uh, sorry I was late. I did have a question about per diem. Um, when this is used, I think we, and, I, and if this was covered, I apologize, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, would per diem be paid out in these instances? That was a great question. Um, and one of the questions that the chairman, one of the first things that came to his head, the good news is this will actually save some money. Not only are they not paid per diem, they're not paid uh, mileage. They're, they're only allowed mileage. So since they're not getting per diem anyway, it would only affect the mileage. Well, if they're not traveling, they wouldn't be eligible for per diem. So it would save some money, not much. But that's, that's a great question. So actually it would save some money. But the bigger thing is they just, they're not getting the attendance and they, they just believe it's because they're, you know, it's you're basically giving up half a day for a, for a one hour, hour and a half meeting. And we have, thank you. Have another question? No, I'm good. Uh, would you sorry. anticipate there be any provision for any of these electronic equipments for people serving? I wouldn't think so. I I think that would just be on their own because they would have to, as long as there's one laptop in the room. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm chairman of our local airport authority in Tattanoe County, and even though he's not an official there because it doesn't allow, we still allow him. He just calls in and we put the phone on the table because he wants to be informed and have uh, comment. So, I, and I'm sure a lot of other people are doing that, but no, I, this would not have any requirement for them to buy technology. It would, if you, if you got a smartphone, it's available anyway. Thank you. If the committee doesn't have any questions, I have a few. Um, first off, tell us about the RDCs and exactly 
how they come about, how they get to be on this this committee, how many times they meet, and are all the committees the same, all the meetings the same, or are some of them executive committees and some of them are just monthly meetings, and, and how it's all structured, please. Okay. As far as I know, and, and there's eight, and it's basically dividing the, the region, the, the state, into eight regions, and the, and they pretty much set their own rules. They're very similar in that most of them will meet once a quarter, but if they have something come up, they will meet more or less frequently. Uh, the way they're made up of those, the, the employees who work for the RDC were, would be auto automatically included. But then what they try to do is to get a collaborative between community leaders and business leaders to be on that. And in fact, I think I heard recently one of the Northeast Georgia regions uh, they don't pay a per diem. They just have a nice meal when they get there, and so that's their draw of getting them there. But it's it's kind of whatever they, I mean, they they operate so independently. I don't know that there's a universal answer to that as far as how they they operate. And who all is on the board? The well, I mean, I'm not sure it's board. It's it's the folks who. And I'm not even sure they're calling it a board because it's actually the employees of the RDC and then whoever they invite. And I, I'm not even sure their the criteria is the same, like if one has five business people and another one may have six or seven. So I, I'm not sure if I could get the answer to that. So what you're saying is that the employees are on the board, but they, do they not also have people appointed to serve as volunteer board members from outside of the people who work on the RDC? Yes, with the, RDC? those volunteers, and generally their business are community leaders. And, and do, they're they, not do they volunteer for this? Yes. To be on this board? Yes. And when they volunteer, they usually are expected to meet four times a year? Correct. And how many are, how many do you think volunteers or outside of the ones that actually work for RDC on each board? The figures I've been hearing are any, anywhere from four to seven outside members. And, and, a lot, and in addition to community or business leaders, they also try to get somebody from their local government. So they'll try to get a county commissioner and or a, a city councilman to come also. Because this is one of the few ways these, these regional commissions are one of the few ways that cities and counties can work together as a region to either solve problems or invite economic development because most of the times your cities and counties are acting independently so this is this is really about the only mechanism out there that allows them to collaborate and work on a project as a region so that that does answer my next question because there is a there is a necessity to have this in order for the community leaders to work together with the RDCs. Now, how big are these communities? Because I know they're different sizes. So how, how big are some of these communities? And how small are some of them? Well, in in my case, like I'm in Tattnall Evans, and I'm not sure. I think Wayne Falls actually in the one south of them, but the one I'm most familiar with is called the Altamaha RDC. And as a business person, I served on it like 15 or so years ago it's it's been a while um so does that answer or but like i said they always tried to have a city and county if i'm not mistaken mine is like 10 counties oh yeah they're big and that and that's the problem you you could easily drive I, i've been saying an hour i guess you could drive two hours if it was not centrally located yeah i, I think ours is eight counties so so the the commission itself is can be pretty big if they can get 100 percent attendance which of course you know they can't but well when this was originally set up uh i know that maybe the technology wasn't available but i'm i'm personally one of these that i like to do business face to face i think so much more comes out of a face-to-face -face meeting uh and matter of fact i can vouch for that last night i took my wife out to a late dinner and she was on the phone because she's the president of the uh, local pilot club, and she's got them on mute, but she's sitting in on the meeting while we're at dinner. Do you really think she was really paying attention and participating in that meeting? And that's probably my biggest concern. And uh, we have uh, Ms. Price has a question. Okay. It's kind of along that line. Um, would there be any other restrictions on the person? Pull your mic around, please. 
would be any other restrictions on no. on the attendance at the meeting that you could vote and just you'd be a full member full fully participating member even though you weren't there you would if we if we pass this legislation and, and i think that's the difference in my example of the uh the airport authority of which i'm chair we had a member who is a nuclear engineer and he would go do outages in alabama he would participate in the meetings but in order to vote he had to send his proxy but if but if we pass this they would be a full participating member that, that could vote make motions and do whatever would you consider like entertaining um, a restriction on like numbers of meetings per year or something like that or yeah but i i would i would rather leave that up to them like are you saying like of the let's say we have four meetings you can only tell a conference one or two of them is something, that what you're something saying something like that yeah. um i mean i would entertain anything but i my personal opinion is for as a state level not to try to regulate them is to let them make that decision representative Caldwell uh, thank you. chairman um, on that line of thinking I think my my personal preference I'd like to model which I think is what you're doing here model as closely to what we require of state boards already and so if we allow state boards to telecommute and they're allowed to be full voting members then then my preference would be not to uh, personal preference here and obviously defect to the will of the committee but um but i, I would want to keep it as uniform as possible so that we don't have uh, a jumble of different rules depending on what level board you're in uh, i'd prefer to to as as we free up boards to do this let's keep it as uniform as we can thank you and you mentioned the, the airport authority but you said that this was only about rdc's is that correct? right no i was just giving an example so rdc's are i mean the airport authorities are not under right this it would strictly time. be rdc's okay but I, I was just asking her question using an example yeah. that when we do the, the airport authority, he was not a voting member at that point. All right. Representative Dukes. With the gentleman you. Yes. Is it not true that the primary reason for this is that uh, in some districts, the Region Development Authority can expand as far as 70, 80 miles, and that members have to travel so far to, to participate in these meetings? That was the that's what brought this bill on that's exactly what brought this on and it's further not true that because members do have to travel so far sometimes it's very difficult for them to be able to get a quorum to take care of the business at hands that affects all of them right and and that was brought up the the problem of either getting quorum or as you initially said you're basically giving up in a half a day for a one-hour meeting and is it further not true that we typically don't pay these people who serve mileage or per diem for, 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 for showing? It's, it's different with each commission. Some of them, none of them pay per diem. Some pay mileage. If we were to pass this and they participated teleconference, they would give up their mileage. So they, because it's basically a volunteer position anyway. Yeah, so it, it wouldn't cost them anything. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I want to thank you, and I know we're going to have some more questions. I, I think my biggest thing is it sounds to me like there's no set rule for what the RDCs are doing. Uh, some of them meet four times. Some of them meet 12 times. I mean, that's, that's, is, that, is that true? As far as I know, I, <clears throat> they do not have a uniform. They, they, they operate independently. And they also, I thought, had some meetings that were called executive meetings and outside of the quarterly meetings and at least from all an rec that i spoke to and uh, my concern would be that if you have an executive meeting there there needs to be some point in time during the year that you have face-to-face -face meetings to really iron out some things rather than uh, and people will say things over the phone they won't mm -hmm. say in person and so i don't know that that's always a good thing all right um if there's any other questions, I'll, I'll let the sponsor take them. If not, I'm going to let you have a seat and see if anyone else wants to speak on the bill. Okay. Thank you. I didn't ask. Thank you. I didn't ask for sign-ups on the bill, but I would like for somebody that is familiar with this, if you would, to come yeah, speak. Right. 
Good, uh, good afternoon. I'm Terry Matthews, and I represent the Regional Commission Association, and we appreciate the representative bringing the bill. Um, if, uh, <clears throat> as, 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 as you've discussed earlier, the, uh, some of the districts are, are quite la large, uh, uh, some eight counties, 12 counties, some more than that. I think this would uh, allow an opportunity at times when, when folks uh, were not able to get to the meeting to do it by teleconference. Mr. Chairman, I think we share your, uh, um, uh, your concern of, of, of the importance of face-to-face -face contact. So uh, we, we understand that and we also, uh, our commission members also uh, believe that. Um, I think uh, if, it was, if it was limited to, to uh, a couple of, of, of meetings a year, then, then uh, that, might, that might be the uh, help, help if, with regard to concerns for that. Uh, the, com the, the commissions are, uh, the regional uh, commission uh, uh, councils are comprised primarily of, of city and county elected officials, uh, but the speaker does have an appointment to the each, each of the councils. Uh, the uh, lieutenant governor has one appointment, and the governor has three appointments, I believe, one of which must be the school superintendent or someone in his or her uh, serving in, in his or her capacity. Um, all of the, um, the commissions, I believe it's in the, in the uh, planning act that they are required to meet at least eight times, uh, eight times a year, it may be 10. Uh, um, so so uh, they uh, um, uh, do, do meet much more often than quarterly. Um, but, or there, and I, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Well, you again, might have. I, I do have a question. Is it back to this? What I heard about the executive committee meetings is that only in whatever RDCs that they want to particularly call a meeting an executive committee to give it more importance, so people will show up, or is is that up to each RDC? Or are you for, are you uh, aware of that? Yeah, I mean, I I do know that the the, the regional commissions uh, from time to time may call an executive committee. I'm not a, aware of the executive committee ever taking the place of the uh, typical of the regular nor uh, monthly meeting. Okay. But I could certainly check with the check All with right. them. But I haven't. I'm not aware of okay. of, of that in in any way taking place of the regular. Public but these meeting. people that are serving, other than the one, well, all of them, these that are serving, including the one that the speaker, the lieutenant governor, and the governor asked to serve on these, are doing it as volunteers. And when they're asked, they have an opportunity to say no if they don't feel like they can make it to the meetings. And therefore, someone else could be chosen that maybe has more time. In, I'm not saying for or against. I'm just saying they do know this. And when they accept that position, they understand that currently the position is to be there. And, and my understanding is the attendance has fallen off quite a bit. Um, and I'll ask the sponsor to just say yes or no from his seat. Is that, is that true? Is that the, one of the reasons that's we're doing? That's what you're hearing, that the, the attendance has fallen off. So when the attendance falls off, I mean, we've done this at our airport authority. If you miss a certain amount of meetings, you you basically given up your uh, position. So someone else that has, you know, some interest um, would show up. Now, in the event that you're talking cities and council government not showing up and but they're mandated to be on the commission I, I don't know how we handle that you know uh that sounds like um if they're mandated to be there but that's not a volunteer position for them is that true or not right mr chairman it's uh it's it's a volunteer position even for the city and council members yes i'm not, I, i'm not aware you, of anyone you says mostly made up of government officials but again it's in a volunteer position uh, okay uh, right. absolutely and I, i'm not aware of any circumstance where the um, uh, if a city official county official wished not to serve that that there weren't others that were willing to step forth and do that and it's absolutely correct there's not none are paid per diem uh, some are paid mileage some of which uh, they meet over lunch or or supper and that's they get lunch or mm -hmm. supper and uh and there's not even any mileage paid so it's, 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 it's a volunteer, uh, uh, act, uh, act and how long do they serve for? I think it varies from, from, from RC to RC. Um, but I could, I could find out, but I think it's, 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 it's based on their bylaws. Um, 
uh, the, you know, their term of their term of service, or in some of the, you know, we've seen situations obviously with city and county elected officials. If sometimes they retire from from public office or re get retired at the polls, and yeah. and you know, there's always transition and turnover. But I'm not aware of any problem of having people to serve. So what we need, I think, and we got a question, if you don't mind staying there a second. Yes, but, sir. Uh, Representative, what we need is, is a couple of questions answered for sure. And that's one is how long are, do they serve? And is there any criteria for um, repercussions if they, as a volunteer, they miss a certain amount of meetings a year? And do they require, absolutely require at high level, an executive committee meeting to where they have a higher attendance or take care of business annually or twice a year and uh, representative Turner has a question more more or less a comment if I may Ms. sure mr. Absolutely. chairman um, I, I, and I appreciate your point of view and being concerned with uh, making sure that they're getting the most out of their meetings uh, I, I would be concerned myself that we would uh, we would restrict them uh, by law to a face-to-face -face meeting and I'll tell you why I I come from a service background. I actually built a world-class, if I'm going bragging myself for a minute, I built a world-class service organization over 15 different cities in the U.S. Um, I had 40 different employees import, reporting to me in that structure. I rarely stepped foot in the cities of Chicago or Pittsburgh, but my customers were taken care of there. Um, we were able to, on a daily basis, meet our mission uh, because people were given the right leadership um, and the right tools, the right processes for that job. Uh, as time changes, uh, people are going to become more dependent upon tools like teleconferencing to do their jobs, whether it's in government or the private sector. And I think this is a great idea that uh, Representative Workheiser has brought forward uh, because it, it doesn't mandate that they, they use teleconferences. It gives them that option. And I think that's something to keep in mind. They can still meet face-to-face, -face and they can still, within their bylaws, establish rules for a certain number of meetings to be held face-to-face. -face. But giving them this flexibility in the toolbox also would have the benefit of, of tapping resources that might not otherwise be able to be in a, in a certain place every single time. And, and so I think the quality of the people that you are able to draw from, the pool of talent, if you will, is greater. And uh, that type of flexibility is something that we should definitely be supportive of. That's, that's well, my two cents. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I certainly am not against the bill in any way. I just think that we ought to maybe get a few answers to some questions. And one, as you just mentioned, is that those in people that you had knew that they had an opportunity to lose their job and not get paid if they, you know. <laughs> in this situation, we're talking about volunteers, and, and really if they don't have that much interest, maybe there's somebody else that would. And I, and I volunteer for a lot of things myself. Right. And frankly, if, you, if you're really sold out to it and you want to participate, you probably are more than likely to show up. However, I'm kind of leaning toward a flexible schedule to where everybody runs into problems and if I'm on vacation I could still be on the call as I'm going down the highway that's great but I don't I don't know that giving it to a point or taking it to a point to where every meeting could be used as teleconference and uh, representative um, you're, you, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> lost your name for a minute. I'm sorry, As it, Dukes, listen, Representative Dukes. Uh, I, I do share your concern and I understand exactly what you're saying. And you know, as the chairman of the committee, you have the the option of, you know, even entertaining a question. But what I would like to do is kind of enlighten you to to the RDC that I'm familiar with, which is the one in Albany, or uh, or I think it might be Region 14. And and we, yeah, we we have a pretty big. It's a pretty big. RDC it runs it probably runs as much as 90 miles from one end to the other and mm -hmm. the way it's kind of set up ours mm -hmm. is set up like this the county has an appointment and the city has an appointment and usually one of the appointments are from the city and the county is an elected official uh -huh. either city commissioner or county commissioner and then they will appoint a business person a, com a person with community interest um, they have always spoken about the challenge of trying to always make that particular meeting um, I do share your concern that once you commit to saying that you're going to volunteer for something that you should show up but what it does is this the people who are trying to run the organization 
have no authority as to who's being appointed. So now they're trying to convince people to come and do what it is that they need to do so they can have a meeting. And sometimes they don't show up. I don't think we have that for a problem in the one which I represent. Because I know whenever I go, it means a fool. I mean, you right. know, I wouldn't just like to think they're coming because they know I'm coming. <laughs> I would assume that they're coming like this on a regular basis. <laughs> let's let oh man let's be sure to get that word out you know <laughs> but I, I think it might be be an idea whose time whose time has come in lieu of the fact that they do do a lot of important business they do ours do a lot of things we we have uh rural housing that's associated with it uh I bid it on a job. Yes, I bid it on a job. We're doing a high school. It's $28 million. And what they want to do is to make sure that they have participation and they use that region as a criteria. While we are always also, you know, expanding that opportunity to everyone, but they have tried to join together and do some things. They also do the Workforce Investment Act. That that piece works out of the region. So to have some things, you got some exceptionally busy people who've been placed there by counties and cities, by factor that they are a county commissioner or a city commissioner, and this is every county commissioner and city commissioner within the region. And they, like us, have ex extensive uh, responsibilities. And if they could be able to do that so that we can move the, the business forward of this organization I think it would probably hurt help now I do think that <coughs> the face-to-face -face meeting is always best it is always best as we can have people to meet whether they can sit around the table and do that but and I'm being long but we still have to take care of the business of the organization if they can't 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 for some reason they can't be there and this becomes a tool to assist the, the leaders of the organization and the, the people the staff people to have policy to move on. Thank you. Uh, I don't disagree, Representative Dukes, at all about the uh, value of the RDCs. I don't know in rural Georgia what we would do without them. They, they fill such a, a big role in uh, helping us with engineering and getting grants and several, several different things, and they have a huge importance. And I, I guess that's one reason I, want, I don't want to step so lightly on the fact that it's okay just to say, across the board that they have the ability to just call in to every meeting and and so we've talked about several questions here and I, and I hope you've taken note of those and one is that if we're going to do something uh, we're through if you well, want to sit you, down Chairman. and I'll bring the sponsor back up thank you for coming up and speaking you want to come back up representative Again, I, I think that uh, where we are with this is there's several open questions, and if we're going to do this, maybe we need to do something across the board for RDCs the same rather than leave them up to their discretion. And in this, maybe we ought to look at giving them some discretionary as to how many meetings that they can miss, because if they're missing meetings, they really don't need to be there you know no offense on anybody some people just want to hold on to the title but they're not participating but uh, some way that if you miss so many meetings then you know you're excused and uh, we can find others that are willing and want to serve however like i said i think that there is an open um, dialogue that we could have to reach uh, an agreement to where at least some of the meetings could be done by um, teleconference and and again this is just a hearing today we're not taking a vote and so with that uh, if there's anybody else that'd like to speak on the bill or uh, the sponsor have anything else they'd like to commit no I appreciate the time and in that case we'll get get back together soon and talk about whether or not we can get the information in time to push it through this year if not we'll look at it again next year and i thank you for your hard work and i really appreciate the rdc's and those of you that come out in the audience and those that you are here on the panel on the board thank you so much and we'll have a dismiss this meeting thank you <laughs>